Right, I just wanted to ask um, what your first thoughts were when you were told that the mass had been moved from Coventry to Cofton Park. Well, when I first received the shock, I suppose, mm. and the fact that time scale is so precise, and that if we are going to do it, we had to do it right, we had to do it well, mm. I didn't want to do something we couldn't achieve. So I had to really check the structure uh, and how we could achieve it, whether it was feasible. Mm. Uh, and the first problem was to get the boundaries as to who was doing what and who was taking responsibility for it. Yeah. If that couldn't be sorted out, then we couldn't take on the job. Mm -hmm. So what were your main concerns, and then how were they overcome? Well, the main concerns was originally they were interested in very big numbers. As I said all along, we have large numbers, but not the sort of numbers they were talking about. You know, not 100,000 plus. There's nowhere in our city where we can organise something with 100,000 plus. And the second thing was I was also worried about the weather, and if in fact it got heavily waterlogged, whether in fact it would be still able to function for such a large number of people in the park. So there's immediate concerns, and the third one, of course, was who was doing what. So, so how did people sort of come together to, to overcome those concerns? Well, the first thing was I had to set out a critique of what we could and couldn't do and try and agree that with both the church and the foreign department office and the police. And if that couldn't have been agreed, then we couldn't have moved forward. So do you think that all our partners sort of came together quite well? How do you think everyone responded? Well, I think they were all a bit thrust together at the beginning because it was all a bit of a shock. And though actually, I do think they made the right decision. I think if you, as long as you follow the criteria and critique I put forward, Cofton Park is an idyllic spot and certainly the best place to hold a spiritual event. But having said that, to have it thrust upon you 11 weeks before, and by the time we'd sorted out who was doing what, it was nine weeks before we could start doing something, it was not my ideal length of time. So um, the day itself, I know you were in the park, got up very early, how did that, t take us through the day, how did that go? Well, I was quite late coming back to, uh, the night before because we'd had a, a civic dinner and I was having a discussion with many people there, about, and it was a very good atmosphere. So I wasn't exactly early to bed, but I certainly was early to rise at five o'clock. So I was a bit sleepy, and of course looked out the window and I thought the worst possible thing. Saturday morning being bright sunshine, Sunday was dull, cold, windy and wet. And I thought, hmm. The only thing that cheered me up was it hadn't been wet much that week, so we knew the ground wouldn't be too soggy, and though it would be not too pleasant, we would still be able to function satisfactorily. So after I'd got up, then the main thing was to remember where was the pass, which caused me great disconcertion. Uh, the difficulty thing is that uh, you, you think, where did you put it? Because I've got an office in the council house, in my own office, I've studied at home. And you try and think, now, where did I put it? I know I put it in a good place. Simple things like that really take precedence. And then making sure uh, the gift was in order, everything else was in order, and making sure everyone was happy. I rang off a couple of senior officers, and they all seemed to be very pleased. Uh, our resilience person was totally relaxed about it. I had a chat with him when I came to the council house, and he was bobbing around in his car, and he seemed very content. Everything was going to plan, so the start boded very well, except for the weather. It was, it was good. So when you actually got to the park, what was the atmosphere like with the pilgrims? Well, despite the weather, everyone looked incredibly joyful. Even though they got all their transparent plastic coats on, sitting there, they all looked remarkably uh, as if they were actually were enjoying the thing. I think the main thing was the atmosphere was very good. I think the marshing was, seemed to work very well from the coach parks, and it all seemed to be running according to plan. So that was a promising sign. Uh, though I must admit, it is disappointing in the weather because it, you know, the clouds sort of darkened it a bit, and I was hoping that it would definitely improve. Uh, then the real difficulty is the countdown. Because we all got there so early, there was an awful long time before the actual arrival of His Holiness, and then the actual mass itself of beatification. There are other things going on which are probably of more interest to the committed Roman Catholic rather than the, the visitors, and so that, that went on quite some time. But interestingly, a number of people I'd invited who were not Roman Catholics said they enjoyed it and, and sat and watched the whole thing and it was a great occasion. So I think a lot of people realised it was a unique occasion, probably never to be repeated in most people's lifetime again, and to actually sort of seize the moment and enjoy it. Can you take me through when you actually met the Pope and, and handed over the, the Birmingham City's gift? Well, I'd been talking to some other people like Bishop David, talking about the weather and think we really hadn't prayed enough. And the rain had suddenly stopped about just after 9 o'clock, and the wind lessened, which I thought was a remarkably good sign. And then we had the countdown, so 
they were saying the car was five, five minutes away, it landed, the car was five minutes away, and four, three. Then the helicopters came over the top, and first came the police escort, the motor outriders, then the police cars, and then came his limousine. And at that point, the sun came out. Now, it sounds a bit corny, but the sun actually came out when he came around the bend. I thought that was quite astounding. And you can ask anyone that actually happened. And it, and it was just, I know it's maybe a coincidence, but it was rather superbly fitting. And it bounced off the Tim Tolkien statue of Cardinal Newman, which I thought was rather appropriate. And what did he say to you? Well, his first thing was he really was congratulating Birmingham on, on the effort and how much he appreciated everyone doing everything at such short notice and how marvellous he organised everything was. So, full compliments to all the people who worked together, particularly all the officers of the City Council who worked so well under the papal team. It was a, a great compliment to all of them, really. I know you've talked before about the legacy, but, but sum up just what it does mean to the city, not just on the day itself, but in the future. Well, I think it proves, one, we can do big events. We can do them under pressure. We can do them on a very cost-effective manner. We can work in partnership and bring people together so we work as a team. And we have the opportunity to showcase our city across you know, the whole world. Over a billion people watching is our big moment, and thank goodness we rose to the occasion and it was great for our city. So there has been a lot of praise for the city mm. uh, about how it went. Um, what well, a silly question, but, but did you expect that? What are your thoughts on, on the, res the response from, from people? Well, I think it was deserved, the praise was, to be honest. We were put in an incredibly difficult position. I could have just said no, because I was in charge, and the leader very kindly gave me total authority to make decisions. But I also realised it was a great opportunity. If we could only make sure we could do it, and there was enough time to do it, we could all pull together, it would be an incredible success for the city. So it was worth the challenge. So I think that was the thing that always worried me, that we, got, we had to pull together fast enough in order to do it. And we did pull together fast enough to do it. So we proved from that that we can persuade, cajole, and get partners to realise that we divide responsibility. As I said before, we managed to do a very limited cash input. There are a lot of effort from people and commitment from officers, but that's their skills. And what it's proved is we have a lot of skilled officers in a wide range of jobs. All had to do their bit to the best. Now, they're in that job anyway. They weren't brought in specially. They're there doing that job. For this moment, they had this specific job, which is very unusual in their lifetime. They had this opportunity. And they all rose to the occasion. So it was brilliant. So just in summary, what was it all worth it? Oh, yes, I, I think without doubt. Whether I said that it all gone wrong is a different matter, but I mean, I think it was worth it because I don't think it could have gone seriously wrong because we knew we'd done the setup right, we knew we got the structure between our partners right. I think the only things that could have gone wrong were things that would have been external influences which we, were difficult for everyone else to handle. Unfortunately, that didn't occur. Thank you. Sorry, I'll just make it up for a whole minute. I hadn't um, switched the microphone on, but I had. That's fine. That's great. Thank you very much. That's it. Achievements, which I thought was very beneficial to making success, was persuading everybody that we should have a viewing area of the Pope-mobile outside Cofton Park. When I fought for Cofton Park, even the church were behind it. And so that was in their secure area. That was agreed relatively early on, namely three weeks before. But... At ten days before, we still hadn't agreed. We'd always, from the beginning, we'd worked out where you could have viewing areas. Our resilience team and our, we'd all worked out what it would involve and how you do it. The question was, could we get agreement for all the different people involved that we could do it? And that was the thing I was trying hardest of the lot. And eventually, ten days before, everyone agreed with me, and we had the viewing at Hagley Road. And I think that was great for the city, because it actually showed the public bill on the streets of Birmingham. It allowed 20,000 people to have a moment of enjoying the occasion and it showed up our city and so we all benefited from it and I think we would have been a loss if we hadn't managed to achieve that.